so welcome to the second session. Uh, we were talking about uh, uh, pharmacophore mapping technique. Uh, so as I said, there are different 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 methods uh, of of drug design approach. And uh, you will feel laughed if I just uh, let you know that uh, during the periods of uh, uh, this this break or this session. Uh, you all undergone energy minimization process because uh, uh, I'll, I'll, if I let you know that I have been sitting on this chair for a while and uh, I was uh, quietly uh, devastated and I was unable to maintain my position. So I had to maintain a lot. I, I'll have to spend a lot of energy. But, but once I took a break, I stood up and, and I changed my confirmation. So when I changed my confirmation, I actually went through the energy minimization process. So this is exactly the thing which happens with the, the drug molecule when it, when it is inside uh, the biological environment and it continuously changes its shapes, uh, its conformations when it is inside the a biological environment. So we'll come back to the pharmacophore mapping again. I said there are situations uh, in, in, in drug designing, if you are having the structure of receptor, then you'll go for the techniques like virtual screening or uh, de novo designing and techniques like that. But what if you don't have the structure of, of receptor? What if you don't have the target site structure? In that case, we go for another approach, which, which is called as the ligand based drug designing approach. Now, uh, the major techniques in this uh, series or in this approach are uh, QSAR, quantitative structure activity relationship studies. And one of the new techniques uh, which uh, have been evolved uh, a few years before is pharmacophore mapping. So before understanding this technique, we must, uh, we must get familiar with the term what pharmacophore exactly means. So there are lots of definitions of pharmacophore, right from the very easiest to the very hardest one. And uh, the one which I found the simplest, it is the, the molecular framework. The molecular framework, which is made up of foros. And foros are, foros are nothing but essential groups. And actually, these are the essential groups which are actually responsible for pharmacon, for the biological activity of the drug. So as you've already, uh, you are having the idea that any drug is having two parts. Any, any molecular compound is made up of two parts. Some of its, its parts, some of its functional groups, atoms are actually responsible for interacting with the receptor. While other molecules are responsible for providing support to the structure and simultaneously these other groups may also participate in, other, uh, in, in providing other characteristics to the drug like pharmacokinetic activities. So some groups may be responsible for providing hydrophilicity, some might be able to, to, to provide lipophilicity, and some at the same time, they're responsible for interaction, as well as they are also imparting some pharmacokinetic properties to the drug. And such functional groups, some such atoms, they are called as foros, or they are referred to be as essential groups. And these essential groups are called as pharmacon. So a molecular framework or a molecular structure which is having essential groups which are required for pharmacological activity or biological activity is nothing but the pharmaco pharmacophore. So I hope you have got the definition of pharmacophore. It is very simple. A molecular framework which is having essential uh, functional groups or atoms attached at particular specific positions and therefore it is responsible for showing biological activity and that, that uh, structure, such a structure will be referred as pharmacophore. Now, as you can see on your screen, as I said, there are different structures in a molecule and every structure is responsible for different type of activity. So like this particular structure, you can see in this particular color. So this structure might be responsible for forming hydrogen bond with the acceptor site, like with the site of the, uh, uh, the, the amino acid. Similarly, this particular group is responsible, this particular group in this structure is responsible uh, for, it, it acts as a hydrogen bond donor and it forms a hydrogen bond with another amino acid. Similarly, there are ionic structure, there are anionic structure with react with, with interact with cationic sites and cationic structures with interact with anionic site. Then there are hydrophobic uh, groups which form hydrophobic interactions. Then there are, there are aromatic uh, compounds which form aromatic type of interactions. So what I mean to say is that in every drug, there are some structures which are responsible for forming different, different types of interactions with the receptor site or with the amino acid. Now what we do in pharmacophore mapping, I, I, I just sort out or I just map these interacting groups. I just make a map of this interacting group. Now, how would I do so? I just told you about virtual screening. That screening was when I was having structure of the receptor, according to the structure, structure of receptor, I could find 
the the multiple ligands or i can also uh, generate the ligands with de novo designing now as i said in the in the earlier example like i don't know where quinine is going to act but i have the structure of quinine and i know that quinine at least shows anti malarial activity so if i want to design a drug which shows interaction or which can be fruitful in malaria then i should also refer that i i should refer the structure of quinine and when i refer the structure of quinine well, the only method to me is that finding structures which are which are similar to the quinine the structures which are having similar characteristics similar arrangement similar functional groups with respect to the quinine so i'll have to search for such structures and that can be done uh, by by virtual screening like yesterday polshetty or sir uh, 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 walk us through the same technique uh, in the form of zinc library he told us how to perform that and another ma method is that pharmacophore mapping how can i do so so you can see there are two molecules in, in on your screen now these two molecules are are being used for a particular disease these two drugs are being used for a particular disease and if, if you can see that both of these ligands or both of these small molecules are having some structural similarity that like they are having this sulfur moiety they are having this nitrogen uh, uh, rich area and they are they are having this uh, this this particular ring structure so both of these molecules are having particular structural uh, uh, structural specifications so what i do i align those structures over each other and when i align those structures over each other i generate a map so you can see here i can generate a map and this map is actually showing uh, this shows me that what functional groups what kind of chemical compounds are required at what particular positions so you can see there is this uh, this hydrogen bond donor group there is another hydrogen bond donor group and th this red one there is this hydrogen bond acceptor group and these are the hydrophobic groups so this map tells me that if want if i want to have a particular type of activity then my molecule should have such a structure in which chemical compounds should be placed in this manner so this is the map for me so after generating this map what my software will do for me the software will again go to the virtual library and it will search for the compound having similar type of arrangement it will search for the compounds having groups arranged in similar pattern a compound which should be having hydrogen bond or hydrogen bond donor at a distance at a particular distance from this hydrophobic group a structure which is having a hydrogen bond donor group at a distance of this particular group so according to this map the 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 software is going to form it, it is going to identify new molecules for me and those molecules i would refer those molecule to be hit molecules like this you can see in the example so i generated a map and with the help of map i went through the software the software searched on virtual library and it it searched for the molecules having similar type of arrangement and i got multiple results and compounds like this now this these compounds which have been proposed by the software to have similar arrangement as per my map now these uh, compound i can refer them as hit molecules and i can further go for their modification and this thing is called as pharmacophore mapping how would i do this technique if i am practically performing this technique I, i'll i'll go for uh, i'll synthesize different structure so you know the structure uh, i am taking as a reference they are already established structure these structures are already having well known activity and this technique can also be useful in multi drug target system so i can select i can select the ligands for different targets i can go then uh, after making their structures i would go for their con uh, energy minimization so i'll get best confirmations of these ligands after energy minimizations then i'll get the lowest energy confirmations and i will align them over each other and i will generate a map and then according to that map i'll see virtually what kind of new molecules i can find so this technique is called as pharmacophore mapping and with the help of this technique i can find out <laughs> uh multiple uh, multiple compounds uh, or hit molecules which i can also uh, improve near in future by different techniques like qsr so this is the pharmacophore mapping uh, the software which is used for this there are different type of software but one free software is called as farm mapper and uh, i should also thank uh, dr vidya mitra because these uh, uh, these these photos that you are seeing on your screen and i 
I just incorporated into my presentation. These photos actually have been taken from her YouTube video, uh, which is there on the MHRD Patshala. So I'm extremely thankful to Dr. Vidya Mitra for showing this uh, beautiful images. Now, the next thing which uh, uh, we, I'm going to talk about is the last thing of this computer aided drug designing. However, there are many more techniques, but it is not possible to include me in this particular period of time. So uh, another very important thing uh, is called as QSAR. So uh, it is not really a very new technique, but it is going through so further, de further development. We might have heard about 3D Q QSAR, but now there are 4D, 5D, and even 6D QSAR, which is in process right now. So before moving on, let's just uh, uh, recall uh, our degree time. Uh, uh, all of us have gone through SAR. Uh, the, we have written SAR in number of questions and number of answers. So SAR stands for Structure Activity Relationship Studies. Now this SAR and QSAR, it all depends upon a very old hypothesis, or I should uh, tell uh, it, it is a very old pillar of medicinal chemistry. And that old pillar is that the pharmacological activity of any ligand or any compound is a result of its molecular structure or its molecular property. So this hypothesis tells me that whatever the activity, biological activity of any drug, any molecule I get, that activity is a result of its molecular structure and the structural arrangement and the properties of those particular functional groups. So it should be vice versa. If I say that structure is, uh, uh, structure is responsible for biological activity, then biological activity should be a result of structure. So if a particular type of structure is showing me antipyretic activity, then the antipyretic activity should be a result of same structure. So if I find drugs having same structure of as that of aspirin or as that of a paracetamol, then I should be getting some amount of antipyretic activity. This is the, the whole theme of quantity, uh, SAR. Now what I do, I, I just, uh, in case of QSAR, I just turn this property into quantities, into numbers. And when I go through these numbers, so these numbers tell me that uh, whether a particular functional group can give me increased property, increased particular type of property or decreased particular type of property. I'll show you an example of that. So as I said that in QSAR, structural properties, different type of properties like hydrogen bond donor, uh, hydrogen bond donor, it is, a, it is a property, hydrogen bond acceptor, it is a property, forming lipophilic interactions, it is a property, steric interactions, it is a property, and there are so many types of properties and these properties are called as descriptors. So in different uh, QSAR, the number of descriptors are, alert, are, are different. For example, uh, if I go for 3D QSAR, the number of uh, descriptors will be more along with uh, common descriptors like log p value and dissociation constant. The 3D QSAR will also be incorporating the properties due to the structural arrangement or spatial arrangement of that molecule. And similarly, when I go for 4D QSAR, the descriptors, the number of properties are increase. When I go for 5D QSAR, the properties of proteins are also being taken into considerations and so on. I'll give you a very simple example of that because we don't have much time. So if I want to study the physical chemical properties or if I want to improve the physical chemical properties of my molecule. So what are different physical chemical properties? The general physical chemical properties are hydrophobicity of the molecule, hydrophobicity of the substituents, electronic properties of the substituents and steric properties of the substitute, substituents, the group which, are, which I am going to attach on my structure. So let's talk about the hydrophobicity of the, uh, of the molecule. So in order to find out hydrophobicity, I depend upon the parameter or a descriptor, which is called as partition coefficient. It is uh, experimentally, it can be calculated. So higher the partition coefficient, higher is the hydrophobicity of that compound or higher is the lipophilicity of that compound. So if I am going to, to design any drug which is showing activity in the CNS, if that drug is showing, going to show the activity, for example, uh, sedatives or hypnotics, then it must cross the blood-brain barrier. And in order to cross the blood-brain barrier, it must have a sufficient amount of lipophilicity or hydrophobicity. Now, it, had been, uh, it has been well uh, established that the drugs which are having a log P value around 2, around 2, can easily cross the blood-brain barrier and can easily show the CNS activity. And therefore, most of the CNS active, most of the drugs which are showing CNS activity are having the log P value around 2. Now, how can I, uh, how can I use the QSAR for this? So here you can see there are, there are different structures. Basically, this is nothing but the benzene. So this is the benzene, which is having a log P value of 2.13. Here is the chlorobenzene. The difference between benzene and chlorobenzene is just one chlorine. 
Here one hydrogen is substituted with chlorine, and then there is a benzamide. Here one hydrogen is substituted substituted with a carbamide group. So all these are structural derivatives of benzene or the substituents. Now you can see these all are having all of them are having a different range of log p value, which means that the lipophilicity of benzene is around. It will be uh, it will be sufficient to cross CNS. But if I add a chlorine to it, the lipophilicity will further increase. But if I add the carbamide group, the lipophilicity will decrease. So this is how I use the QSAR. The software tells me about the nature of different substituents. Like here, the software just told me about the nature of chlorine. That if I add chlorine to the benzene, it will increase the lipophilicity. Or if I add carbamide to the benzene, if it, it will uh, going to reduce the lipophilicity to a very high extent. After if I add, if I substitute my compound with uh, with the carbamide, the the log p value decreases to 0.64, and now my drug is unable to cross the CNS. And if it is unable unable to cross the CNS, it will not be able to show me the sedative or hypnotic activity. So this kind of detail we get from QSAR. I don't have to, uh, I don't have much time to talk about each and every descriptor in detail. So I took the simplest simplest one in order to. Tell you what exactly these things function. So in the same way, I can get uh, information regarding hydrogen bond donors. I can get uh, information regarding uh, uh, steric parameters, like there are Taft steric parameters, and there are so on. There are a number of parameters, and the problem of this technique is actually selecting parameters. Which parameter you should select for performing? Uh, uh, this technique and that actually depends upon experience and it also depends upon what kind of uh, uh, activities you want to alter in your structure like for example i just performed pharmacophore mapping and i got hit molecules and i found that those hit molecules are they are not having log p value as uh, 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 intended to me I, I, the log p value that i actually wanted to my drug to have so what i can do i can perform qsar and qsar will tell me that which particular substitutions i can add to that hit molecule which will increase the lipophilicity of my molecule and therefore the same molecule will after addition of that substitution will be able to show the cns activity however it is as as i said earlier before and i am saying this time as well this is only going to be a prediction and actual activity will only will only be uh, ascertained after you go for the biological activity so here we end up with uh, with understanding of different techniques of computer aided drug designing under different approaches or under different circumstances so let me just summarize this thing that we have got two approaches in order to develop or design a drug one is structure based so this uh, which includes techniques like uh, uh, like homology modeling protein designing or docking or virtual screening or de novo designing well these techniques i will select only if i have the structure of the receptor so if i have the structure of receptor i can modify or i can develop the receptor depending upon by selecting these particular methods you can also select multiple methods at at, at a single time and if i don't have the structure of uh, uh, of the receptor site if i don't have the structure of the target then i will go for ligand based uh, drug designing in which i depend upon uh my my complete uh, process depends upon the knowledge of already existing molecules and i take already i sort out already existing molecules i modify those molecules with different techniques like uh, uh, qsar qsar and then i get the ultimate molecule or or the drug compound which i have to be tested by which i have to test uh, biologically in order to find the true activity of the compound so here are different techniques that we talked about 